Hi friends, this is Caitlin. Thank you so much for coming to hang out with me on this Friday night. We're trying something a little different this week. We're hanging out on Monday and Friday. Next week, we will go back to our normal Tuesday, Thursday schedule. Same time, same places, but um, yeah, let's enjoy a little Friday night crafting together. So I see Virginia already checking in. Um, it's so good to see you. Um, oh, it's, is it super humid? You're in Virginia. So it's very humid here. I'm assuming it's the same there. Um, tonight we are going to try something a little, I mean, a little different. We haven't done this before together. I'm going to be trying to make a watercolor background panel for a scene. Um, I did bring my hair dryer out. <laughs> so in theory, if um, I add more water than I'm intending, we should be able to get it dry enough that we can actually like make the whole card. Um, I see my dad checking in. Hey, dad. Um, so yeah, let me go ahead and flip this around. We'll go ahead and jump in. I see Mary too. Could you guys even hear me for any of that? Hopefully. <laughs> I just realized I took myself out instead of taking myself off of. Here we go. Now I'm down there. I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna repeat myself. She's Susan said nope, you couldn't hear me. All right. Well, let's try that again. So I um if it's not one thing, guys, here, it's certainly another. Um, okay, I am still solidly in love with the Smile Crocodile stamp set, and I have not been able to kind of get them out of my system. They came out last summer, and I absolutely love them. They're so adorable, and I really wanted to play with the little swimming crocodile with his little snorkel mask, but the problem is I keep, uh, I, I want him in an underwater scene. I don't want him just, like, floating around, um, like, sitting on a page. So I decided that it would be fun to make our own watercolor background for him, like an underwater oceany scene. Um yeah, so I brought out the hair dryer in case this gets a little a little crazy. We can dry between layers maybe. Um so yeah, I already stamped out two of each seaweed and one crocodile and I colored two of them and I did pre-pick out my markers to help this go a little smoother. That's my hope. Um, I see Susan, I see May Julianne. Thank you, Mary. <laughs> oh, I see Beverly. Hey, Beverly. Um, so yeah, so we're gonna start on the background. I'll save these to color in case we need to give our paper an extra minute to dry. I also already pre-stamped my sentiment on a piece of pebble cardstock. So it just says, it's been a while crocodile and that's gonna be our kind of sandy ocean floor. Um, I don't think I'm gonna add a lot of texture to this like we did last week, um, but we'll have the little seaweed pieces kind of coming up off of it. Um, I really want the focus and the texture to come from our watercolor panel. Oh, Beverly said she's on time. You're on time whenever you get here, Beverly. So I am using some Distress watercolor paper. And I like this because it's super smooth on one side. And I'm trying to see if I can show you the texture. It's hard to pick up on camera. But the other side is very textured. And that is what we're going to use today, this textured side. Hey, Suki. Oh, hello from Vermont. That's awesome. I don't think we've had a Vermont before. So I have three of the watercolor gems pigments. I have Milky Way, which is that pearlescent white. I have Sapphire, that beautiful blue, and then Caribbean for that teal. And then I also grabbed 
the Barbershop and Lakeside inks. They are water reactive inks. Pink and Main's inks are all water reactive. So we can watercolor with them. And I have a couple different little palettes and acrylic blocks. And I also grabbed my Pink and Main water brushes. These work in that you can fill up the barrel with water twist it back on, and then you just kind of like squeeze the pink area and water comes out. But I'm not very good at controlling that water. So I still tend to like dip into like a bowl or a spray bottle or something and apply my water that way. And I do want this to dry in a reasonable amount of time. So I'm not going to load up my paper with water first um the more water we put on here right the more saturated it is the longer it's going to take to dry so to avoid that we're going to go straight in with color but i am going to try to lay our colors and then i have two of these brushes i have this big flat chunky guy and i have this smaller pointed brush um, and I, my goal with that is to get some bigger washes of color and then to be able to go in and layer some more and kind of create that like wave ripply pattern, maybe. Hey, Peggy. Oh, Peggy's from Florida. Uh, pink and Main is in Florida. It fe feels like oh, there's a lot of Pink and Main fans in Florida. I don't know about you guys. If it's 90 up here in Delaware, I'm sure it's melting hot in Florida. All right, so I'm going to start by stamping out some of my lakeside ink. And I am going to take my spray bottle and spray into that color and go in with my big brush. And we are going to start laying in that color. I'm going to move in horizontal stripes for our whole project today because I want that's the way I want my water and my layers and everything to be flowing and you know what I think is cool this is leaving some like kind of streaks I think that's fun to do some kind of more solid now that I'm seeing how this is already turning out I feel like I'm going to flip this upside down and let that really solid section become the bottom but let's see I'm going to Add some more ink down. You can also do this with the reinkers. Let's see if I have one right here. Pink and Main sells reinkers, and you can dot your reinker right onto your palette and use it that way as well. Start kind of washing on that color. And if I hold my brush kind of to the side, I can get more coverage, more uh, more even pigment versus if I hold it up and down, um, what is that, P perpendicular to the paper, I get those kind of streaky lines. So don't be afraid to, um, you know, change up how you're holding your, brush or your pen or your water brush. I think that looks pretty cool already, just like that. I really like that. I want a little bit of a smoother transition. So I'm gonna go back in with a little bit more of this like very watered down mixture and just see if I can kind of blend that up. That's really pretty. Part of me is tempted to like stop there, but I already grabbed all of these <laughs> all of these other things. You could definitely stop there though. Throwing it out there. But both of my parents are watching right now and I get that too much gene from them. So in their honor, I think it's only right that we keep going. I am gonna 
add some water to my brush and try to get some of this color off, but I'm not going to go super crazy about it because we're staying in that same color family with all of these, right? They're all going to have that blue cool tone background. If we were switching to like a pink or a yellow, it would be way more important. So I'm going in with my barber shop on that same brush. And I'm just going to start bringing in some of that darker blue. Kind of working from either edge of the paper. And my sandy layer is going to go at the bottom there. So I'm also keeping that in mind, right? That bottom section is going to go away. So you don't really need to worry about getting like perfect coverage down there. I think that looks pretty cool. But I 100% knew going into this that I really wanted to add some of the shimmer from the watercolor gems. So we are going to do that. And that's where I'm going to switch up my brush, I think. I was going to do like waves, but now I'm thinking of just like adding that shimmer in like a more intense version of what we already have going on. So let's take. Um, I'll take the end of one of these the pumpkin tools and use that as a little spatula. If anybody has questions or wants to let everybody know about like if you use the watercolor gems, if you're a watercolorist, anything like that. Um, I have a, a feeling there's some new people watching tonight that maybe don't normally just because it's on a different night. Although I figured Friday in the summer was a little bit of a risk to be fair. I'm gonna take just a tiny bit of the Milky Way one. And for these guys, I think I want to wet the brush and pick up the color versus spraying down into that pigment because I'm worried if I spray down into it, they're going to go everywhere. But we also, if anybody was here on Monday, you know that I dumped one of my bottles of water all over my table. So we'll see how this goes. All right, so I am just dipping my brush down into this water. We're going to pick up some of that pigment. Yes, this is already not a great idea. I need more water. No, oh, that wasn't too bad. OK. I want to make sure I have enough of that pigment in there to get that really pretty shimmer. And I'm going to start at the bottom because, like I said, the bottom's going to get covered. Um, can you mix alcohol to mix the powder? Probably. I kind of want these to bleed and run together, water on water. So I didn't, I didn't think about using alcohol. I would assume that would also make it dry much quicker. And I would say you probably need to be working on UPO paper or some kind of synthetic uh, paper so that the alcohol would kind of move around. But I don't see why you couldn't try it. A little would go a very long way. Oh yeah, that shimmer is definitely showing up in there. That's super fun. 
I want there to be a good bit of this color, but I don't want to go too crazy because I want to be able to go in with the other colors as well. Let's pick up some of that sapphire blue, which is definitely like a really jewel toned, beautiful royal blue. That kind of skim across the paper. I have to tell you, this is not how I envisioned this looking, but uh, I like it. That's the cool thing to me about things like watercolor and alcohol ink and like all of splatter anything like that like you're it's all guidelines right you can start out with some kind of guideline and idea but to a certain extent the product's going to do what it wants to do and i'm sure there are master painters and watercolorists out there who could absolutely manipulate this more specifically. <laughs> I don't know if I would drink the pigment. I know they make edible pigments, but I'm not sure that pink and mains is uh, a proof. <laughs> Maybe I'll, we can ask Michelle to, add, to consider adding that to the line next time pigments that you can add to vodka and have an alcoholic beverage. I've seen those crazy um, like edible shimmer powders that you can do that with. That's funny. Can you tell I don't really drink a lot? It didn't even occur to me that that's what you meant. All right, I'm gonna go in now. A little bit of the blue got mixed in with that Milky Way white, but I do not mind that. I wasn't going for the white. I really just wanted that pearlescent shine. So we're going to fill in some of these lighter areas with that color. Yeah, that's so fun. And this dries down just a little bit more. I'll, I'll hold it up to the light and get you guys a good, a good look at that shine. All right. Let's see if we can pick up some, a little bit in the blue. I just feel like sometimes the shine, oh, I never turned my thing. There we go. Now I bet we get a lot better. Maybe. In person, it looks so cool. <laughs> I just have to figure out the right angle. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to let that sit to the side and dry. I think it looks awesome. Um, my only thing I'm debating right now is adding some just plain water splatters to give it like a bubbly texture. Um, but I'm not sure if that's going to take away from the, uh, the lines we have going on. I'll leave it up to you guys. Give me some opinions. Should we add some water splatter to create a bubbly kind of underwater texture or should we just leave it as is with the stripes i already warned you i have the too much gene and so sometimes it's hard for me to make those editing decisions Oh, Virginia says yes to bubbles. It only takes one person in my vote. 
to sway me. So I'm using um, a distress sprayer. And this is cool because if you do like a quick mist, it gives you like a true mist. And if you squeeze the trigger more slowly, it gives you splotches. So I'm going to do slowly so that we get some of those. Let's see if I can get you. You can kind of see some of those bigger splotches. We're going to give this a minute. I'm just kind of fanning it with my hand. We want to give it a minute to kind of grab onto some of that ink. That'll help give like a outer circle edge to it. Well, Susan said go for it too. And then I'm going to go in with my paper towel and pick some of that up. Oh, yeah, I think that's fun. I like that. It almost has like a bokeh effect. Good call. Good call, friends. All right, you can kind of see that shimmer. There's a little bit more of it on that blue, but the whole panel basically has this beautiful, like white. Move my light. There's a little bit of it. Well, I love it. <laughs> Hopefully, you guys can see it enough on camera to understand, but the shimmer is definitely there. I'll make sure I get a good picture of this one with the light. So um, I don't think I need to use my hair dryer, which is lovely, but we are going to set this aside to dry while we do our Copic coloring. So I do have those pulled already, like I said before. We're going to keep this nice and easy for our um, seaweeds. I'm going in with E33 for my sand, just following, I'm literally just outlining those lines that are already there, those artist drawn lines, and then filling in this bottom section with uh, 31. So 33 and 31, easy peasy. Then I like to go back in with the 33 and just add little dots, just tapping the tip of the brush to my sand. That'll just help break it up a little bit. We're not going to worry about adding um, all of that into our actual sand. It's going to be fine. For the seaweed, I'm going to go G29 down the middle and at the bottom. And we're going to use the same shade of green for the alligator as the seaweed. I don't always do that. If this was like an actual fully um, alcohol marker colored scene, I would change it up to give it more detail. But because this is a little more on the cartoony cutesy side and it's, um, I want the focus more on the background and the crocodile and I want the seaweed to kind of disappear into the background. So we're going to just use the same colors. All right, for my alligator, crocodile, I'm gonna start with the G29, that's our deepest shade. We're gonna shade the bottom areas of him. So under his tail, his bottom of his feet, there's an ant on my desk, goodbye under his belly and his arm, that back arm, the under part of his little face, and then under his mask. And I'm also going to add shading to that detailing that's already drawn there for us. I'm gonna jump to YG67 to shade in and start pulling out those shadows. His arm is so tiny, we'll just shade his arm in. Okay. 
I'll just show you his little nostrils too. I'm also going to carry this shade down his back and then over all of that detailing. We're going to add this to the upper part of his around his eyes. My highlight shade is going to be YG25. We're going to use that to fill in. This has a pretty good jump from the 67 to the 25. So I'm going to really take my time overlapping those two, really leaving my marker on the paper for a little longer. That's going to deposit more alcohol into the paper, which will help them to blend together nice and smooth. And then I grabbed YG01 to be a super highlight on his little spikes. Just nice and simple for that. And then to bring in the colors of our background, I figured we would make his mask um, like a BG teal. So I have BG23 for this little frame. And for the bubbles and the mouthpiece. But I'm going to add just a touch of a darker BG45 to that mouthpiece too. And I'm going to take one lighter BG11 and fill in this whole little mask section. Okay, and then the thing that's going to help bring him to life is a little gel pen. So we're going to go ahead and add in our little eye highlights. And I'm also going to add some highlights to the mask, making sure that I'm breaking over that black edge. That outline is really going to help to pull that mask forward away from his face. So there he is. Oh my gosh, you know, it'd be so cute. I know what we're going to do when we're done. We're going to add a touch of gloss to his mask and his bubbles. That'll be really fun. That'll help us give like that 3D shine. Because I did the white, it might like move that white gel pen around a little bit, but that's a risk I'm willing to take at this point. All right, so you can see my watercolor paper has warped as it's dried. If you've been here before, I'm sure that you know what my solution to that is going to be. Let's see, need a card base. And you know what, I was going to say I'm going to foam tape it, but I don't really want to foam tape down the whole thing. I think that adding it to a card base and a um, paper panel will be enough. So our backer panel is this blue dot tone on tone from the year round dots and stripes. I forgot to add that to the supplies list. So I will go back. I'll try to remember to go back and add that in. I love that paper pad. It is really for year round. You can use it on any kind of card. that. Worst case scenario, if this stays a little warpy, I can always tuck it in a book overnight and um, it'll be flattened out tomorrow. The other reason I love this paper is because you can use the dots to make sure that everything is lined up. Uh, 
That is so fun. Oh my gosh, I love that so much. Okay, I am gonna, the reason I didn't wanna foam tape the whole back is because I really wanna foam tape the sandy floor because it's gonna cover over both layers, like the blue and the watercolor. My panel's a little big. I don't know if you guys can see it like hanging over the edge. So I'm gonna try trim that. For some reason, my paper trimmer just does not always do well. Trimming through layers like that. But neither does my guillotine, so it is what it is. All right, we're going to take our foam tape roll. I have it here. Oh, could I tear the top of the sand texture to give it, or sand layer to give it some texture? I probably could. I'm not very good at that. And this is pretty thick. So, I'm trying to think if I, like I've seen people fold a, um, Yeah, we'll just go for it. Ta -da. Thank you, Julianne. I like that inspiration. That's fun. Definitely something I don't usually think of doing. And that was way easier than I thought it was going to be. I was emotionally prepared to have to stamp a new one, but that did not turn out well. So we have our foam tape. Oh, Mary liked that idea, Julianne. She was all for it. All right, so I'm gonna line up the sand with the bottom of the card. Go. That's so cute. See, that's why that's like my favorite thing about these lives is that you guys can help me and it can be like a an actual partnership. So I want to tuck some of these behind and I want to add some of these in the front. And then I think I'm just going to plop him right up there. He's swimming, swimming. So yeah, he has to go up and down because his bubbles are going up. Yeah, that's right. I'm going to do the tall ones in the back for both. Julianne, um, Virginia agrees that the tearing was the way to go to help make it all pop. So again, thank you. I don't think I've ever, I don't know that I've ever torn like a paper element like that on purpose. I've definitely torn it on accident and then tried to make it work, but I'm not sure that I've ever intentionally done that. So that was fun. We're going to cut a little sliver of foam. So I have a tiny little foam piece up there. We're going to add some liquid glue bottom pieces. That's just going to help that to kind of stay up as one layer, one depth across. 
we're going to do the same exact thing. Other ones. That one we're going to center up against that back seaweed a little bit more. So even though they're the same images, they look a little different. Okay. Let's pop up our alligator. I also grabbed the clear glitter enamel dots to add to our background for more of that bubbly texture. Oh, thanks, Michelle. Michelle said, don't forget to give a thumbs up for this adorable card. I appreciate that. I don't know if he needs it. I kind of just like the bubbles that are back there. Either way, I know I definitely want to add the touch of gloss. So let me do that. So touch of gloss is pink and mains version of like glossy accents. If you're more familiar with that. Um, oh, that's a big bubble. I'm just going to add a little blob to my bubbles. And this is going to fog up his goggles for right now, but within 10 minutes, it's going to be completely clear. So that's just going to give that really fun raised texture. Yeah, I think honestly, the shimmer from the paper and the bubble texture that we added is enough. I don't, for the first time in a very long time, I don't think I actually need the glitter dots. So there's a close up. Hopefully, you can see a little bit of that shimmer on the paper and a really fun watercolor underwater scene, little background. Thank you guys so much. I really love how this one turned out. Let me switch back and turn this away and switch back over. There we go without exiting this time. So thank you so much for coming to hang out with me, especially on our little bit of a different night on a Friday. Um, like I said earlier, I will be back next week, normal schedule, Tuesday and Thursday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern, right here on Facebook or YouTube, wherever you are watching from. Always leave, feel free to leave comments and questions um, with the video, even if you're watching after the fact, um, and I will try to address them in our next hangout together. Um, if you can, go ahead and give a thumbs up, a heart, whatever. Make sure you're following and subscribe to Pink and Main. Uh, so that you don't miss out on any of the fun lives and new videos coming out. We will have a re new release coming up pretty soon. So get super excited for that. Um, otherwise, thank you guys so much. Oh, yeah, my sunflower. This is actually a little dress that my daughter picked out for me for my birthday. So thank you, Mary. Um, yeah, I hope you guys have the most amazing weekend. I will see you back here on Tuesday. Thank you guys so much and until